Hello and welcome back to the channel. You join me on oh, a very sunny, very lovely day. I'm on the coast of Kent and today I'm out trying to find some snow buntings to photograph. Oh, it's a windy one today. It's a big test of my GoPro mic. So we'll see how this comes out. So windy in fact that I've managed to pour coffee all over myself today. But uh, we move on. So I've just completed one length of the beach and I've not managed to find them yet. So I'm coming back along the way. Full disclosure, I did come out yesterday. I had about an hour spare and I found them and did get some photographs. I've not edited them yet, so I don't know how they've turned out. The main reason I wanted to do this video today is to give you some tips and tricks on how to research wildlife areas. If you're going to an area, how to research what birds are there, or if you're wanting to target a certain species and are willing to, to travel for it, how to find the best locations. So, I'm gonna have another go at finding these snow buntings. If not, I'm gonna show you the photos I got yesterday. Get in my car where it's gonna be a lot easier for me to speak to you and go through a bit of advice. Right, well I needed the help of another birder to find these because they really are perfectly camouflaged on this pebble beach. But I've found them and I've already got some footage. So now I'm gonna go for some photos and I'll show you. Well, that was a result. I would have had absolutely no chance in seeing those on the beach. I'm just not that good enough of a birder. Lovely. They are beautiful little birds. Incredibly tame. I mean, I was probably no more than seven or eight meters away from them on the pebble beach along with them and they were not phased at all, just going about their business, feeding. It is nice when you can have these, these moments with wildlife, observing them, videoing them, getting photos, and all without disturbing their natural behavior. It certainly makes for a much more enjoyable experience for, well, for everyone involved, really. But yes, the lovely man who helped me find them was a chap by the name of Norman. I've just, just met him this morning, but he was finding them, stuck a scope on them, and then began drawing the birds. So I took, a, I wandered over and took a look, asked if I could get a photo of the, of the drawing he'd done. And then he proceeded to, to show me the rest of his drawings that are in his book. Oh, and they're bloody lovely. So he goes out into the field, finds wildlife, will draw them there, and then take them back, take them back home, 
to either colour them in with pencil or with watercolours. So whilst I'm on my, my walk back to the car, I'll show you a few of the photos I took of his drawings. Now that I'm inside out of the bitterly cold wind, uh, I thought I'd just spend a bit of time on how to research and ultimately find birds and other wildlife. My first tip is to utilise books and apps. Books and apps specifically to do with bird and wildlife identification will very often have maps of where you can see that specific species and also what time of year that you're likely to see that species. So whether they're a migrating bird or a hibernating mammal, it'll give you the best time of year to be able to see them. When I was first starting out, I used the Collins Complete Guide to British Birds. I highly recommend this if you're a wildlife watcher. Um, and then on the app front, which is probably what I use most at this time, uh, I use the Merlin Bird app. So you can go through and search pretty much any bird it's also got a feature where you can record uh, a bird song from your phone and then it will give its best guess as to what that bird was. So that's really good as well if you're trying to find a specifically rare species. There are also quite a few books specifically to do with wildlife photography hotspots. So again, when I was first starting out, I bought this book, um, Photographing Wildlife in the UK. It's by an author called Andrew Marshall. Uh, I'll link it in the description just so just so you're aware. But yeah, if you're starting out, that's a very good place to start just to get a bit of an idea as to as to where to find key species to photograph. My second tip is to learn how to utilize the internet properly. Obviously, the internet is huge and there is tons of information on there, but because it's so big, it can be hard to try and nail down exactly what you're looking for. Now, if there is a specific species that you're after, I would recommend getting a subscription to Bird Guides. Bird Guides is a site where birders will log any sighting that they've had onto an interactive map. Um, so if there's a target species that you're looking for, this is a really good place to start to try and see if they're in the area. Social media, again, there is plenty to choose from on social media, so where do you start? I've had quite a lot of success recently with joining different Facebook groups of local wildlife areas or wildlife areas that I'm planning to go to in the future. People happily share photos of the wildlife that they've seen. Um, people aren't always happy to share specific locations and that is completely fair enough because Obviously wildlife is very sensitive and certain species are particularly sensitive, but it's always just a good way to, to know whether you're in the right sort of area for the species that you're looking for. Other social media sites to utilize is Twitter. Um, I mean, the way that the algorithm works means that once that you're, once you're following a lot of people that post about wildlife, you'll tend to get even more suggestions about people posting about wildlife. Also, Reddit is a good one. If you go onto specific wildlife photography subs or anything to do with the local area that you are, you can search through threads that are on that site and maybe you might get lucky. And my final tip relates to if you're already in an area and you want to try and nail down what wildlife's already there, I would highly recommend just speaking to other wildlife watchers and bird watchers that are around in the area. Over the last few years, I've found people to be incredibly helpful when it comes to being able to track down specific species that are in that area. And a lot of the time, if you're going out on a wildlife photography trip, I don't know about you, but for me, I'm mostly doing it by myself. So being able to connect with strangers, just having a two, three minute chat about what wildlife you've seen, what wildlife they've seen, it can really add to a solo trip. And one tip that I would give to make you more approachable to bird watchers and wildlife watchers is to have binoculars around your neck. I don't know what it is, but usually when it's just me and my camera, I tend to not have so many interactions with other people. Whereas 
if I've got binoculars around my neck, I feel like it's easier to approach other bird watchers that have got binoculars around their neck. And I've also had more people approach me. And from that, you can just have a two, three, four minute chat. And maybe you'll both learn something new about the birds or wildlife that you've seen in that day. So there you go. That's just a few pointers from my recent experiences. Um, number one, books and apps. Number two, utilising the internet. And number three, just chatting to other people that are around. Right, well, I'm going to leave it there. Thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you on the next one. Cheers.